Well, welcome to Launch Stories. <laughs> We're all about connecting and educating Chilliwack entrepreneurs and those outside of Chilliwack as well. Uh, thanks to our sponsors for helping us put this monthly event on, uh, the Chilliwack Economic Partners Corporation and the Chilliwack Innovation Network. Let's hear it for our sponsors. And thanks to Stalo Community Futures through a grant from CIRA, the Canadian Internet Registration Authority. They've been a new sponsor for us, and we did a wonderful First Nations entrepreneur session in June. So that was just fantastic. Thank you to Stalo Community Futures. And thanks to our partners for organizing Launch Stories every month, Cowork Chilliwack, Currency Marketing, and Zynum Ventures. And special thanks to Elise McAlpine, who you should be able to see on the screen there in her domain. She's uh, running all the AV equipment and recording the show tonight, and really has got the hang of it and doing a fantastic job. So well done, Elise. Hello. So I'm thrilled to introduce you to our guest this evening. He is the founder and CEO of Accountium. Please give a warm Launch Stories welcome to Paul Rassan. Thank you, Tim. Well, thanks for coming out, Paul. We'll put you in the hot seat. So we'll start at the very beginning. Uh, this is you with your family. This is my beginning, yes. Yes. <laughs> so you were born in Romania. Yes, I was born in Romania uh, and reborn in Canada. Yes. So for those that aren't familiar with Romania, I did a quick Google image search and found uh, this photo. And you told me the name of this city, but I've already forgotten. So this photo is from uh, Sibiu. Sibiu is one of the most beautiful cities in Romania. Hmm. It was um, the cultural city of Europe for many years. Wow. Yeah. So I have to be honest, when I heard Romania, I, I had a vague idea of where it was, but I went to Google Maps and I, I did a quick search. So if you're anything like me, I think this would be helpful to you. But it's in Eastern Europe, obviously, surrounded by um, a number of countries, including Ukraine, which is obviously in the news right now. But yes. uh, what was it like as a kid growing up in, in Romania? Well, up to a certain age, you know, you don't have any worries. So it was very good maybe until about 10 years old. And back then we had communism in Romania, like extreme communism, similar to North Korea, I would say, hmm. but not so advanced like North Korea. Okay. <laughs> so all the good things about North Korea, you didn't have. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So growing, growing up in Romania, it was good as, as a child, but uh, the communism influenced our country in a negative way. I believe Romania should be like South Korea right now, not hmm. the way it is. And when yeah. did it make the switch to um, so I a was democracy? In... <laughs> or to it a... didn't make the switch okay. to democracy, <laughs> not even. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> but I was in grade one when we had our revolution. Mm. So that was in 1989. So from then until maybe 2000, we had a period of transition. So we moved, we moved from communism to capitalism, how they call it, but it never went through. <laughs> we are still struggling to move towards capitalism. Got it. Yeah. It looks beautiful when the some of the imagery that I found. Actually, it looks very much like British Columbia in exactly, some ways. Exactly, yeah. Romania, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What are the highlights that you can remember as, as a carefree child? Well, I, I could play all day, all night. And we, we, we were happy with very little, you know. Uh, we didn't have that many toys, but we can hang out in front of the building and just play. Hmm. until late at night, hide and seek or kick the ball or many other games. So yeah. I did think when I heard Romania, Transylvania, and I thought of Dracula, and I thought, can I actually talk to him about that? <laughs> and I, when I saw you roll up tonight, I said, yeah, we can definitely talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, have you seen that movie interview with a vampire? Yes. <laughs> so... You have it right here. Okay. <laughs> but I'm pumped. Well done. 
Yeah, let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> so I know that football or soccer for us was a, a passion of yours growing up, and this is you, your the older brother, and this is your younger brother. Yeah, so this is me and my younger brother. We we both were very passionate about soccer. Me, I even wanted to be a soccer player, but unfortunately, I had some accident and I could not play anymore. But soccer was, and is still very popular in Romania and Eastern Europe. Mm-hmm. People become fanatics. So my father wanted to be soccer player, my uncle, all my friends, you know. So, yeah, it was one of the of the good things that we enjoy when we were kids. Hmm. Yeah, playing soccer. And this was a, a team, a semi-professional team. And what I love most about this picture <laughs> is there's a kid like that in every <laughs> photograph. <laughs> He's off in the side yeah. in the corner, <laughs> photobombing. Yeah, that's an international thing, I think. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and so um, was this within Romania that you were playing, or did you ever play outside of the country? No, just in Romania. I play until I was about 20 years old. Okay. So, yeah. And I need to tell you a little, uh, a little bit about sure. uh, our team and how we play. So um, we used to play on the concrete most of the time. So we had only one soccer field and it was reserved for the actual games. So the practice, you do it on the concrete or behind the, behind the neighborhood or at some schools and... Um, in Romania, we had four divisions back then, A, B, C, and D. So D is some small division only with the cities in your uh, province. Of course, provinces in Romania are not like here. Romania is one-fifth of BC. Hmm. So the provinces are very small. So this is just after we promote from the last division in the third division. So okay. we went up one division. So we play regional and we were, uh, the budget for the team was never enough. So many times when we had to go and play outside, we didn't have transportation. So one time (laughs) we went to, to play maybe, it was 100 kilometers away from our city and we didn't have a bus or anything to go, and the city took the fire truck, emptied the water, and said, guys, you need to take these kids to play. (laughs) (laughs) Imagine we arrive there. (laughs) What's going on? (laughs) There is no fire here. (laughs) No, no, it's us. (laughs) We come here to play soccer. Hmm. Another time, this was not very safe, but back then we didn't care or we didn't know about it. So we had... Uh, we had car made in Romania, very similar to Jeep. And the two, two, two seats in the front and then four, I mean, two seats in the, in the back, four and four for four people. And again, we had to go somewhere, no bus available for us, no train. All the team go into this car. Wow. <laughs> Imagine. So the driver was, of course, driver, the doctor, the coach, the psychologist, you know, <laughs> and all he had a spray. <laughs> That's it. And when we arrive there, we start to exit the, the car and he said, okay, where is, the, where, is, where is the rest of the team? Are they coming with another car? No, this is it. We were, everybody was there in one car. So again, everybody was laughing at us, but that didn't put us down you know we were passionate to go and play and and do a good a good game Hmm. wow that's amazing is the giant is he the goaltender (laughs) the very tall fellow this guy's oh this of course who is he he's he's not in uniform well he played but he got substituted earlier and then he changed his uniform i see got it yeah. So soccer obviously is super important. And, yeah. And to this day, do you still follow the sport? And um, well, because of the time difference, I cannot watch the games. Right. And you have to subscribe to those channels. And okay. Yeah. I and, don't have. And the North America anymore. equivalent, the White Caps and everything, is a pale comparison, isn't it? Or, or now that they have Messi going. Mm, yeah. It's not so competitive as right. in Europe. Yeah. Yeah. 
but it's still good. It's it's a good tournament. Mm -hmm. MLS, it's it's good. Good. Yeah. Uh, when I asked you about this photograph, you said it's complicated. <laughs> so this was your girl. <laughs> this was your girlfriend in Romania, yes. and you came to Canada together. So yeah, so she was my high, high school sweetheart. How mm -hmm. you call it? Yeah. And I love her very much. And she was one of the most prettiest girl in my city. And we were together for a while, and then we got married in Romania. And we come here together, but unfortunately, we separated. Hmm. But uh, we are still very good friends. She's doing super good. I'm doing okay. And yeah. Okay. <laughs> and she lives in Chiliwak. Wow. <laughs> so you <laughs> might meet her. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. And this is high school. And it, yes. it looks like any old high school group, isn't it? So were you, you have a whole bunch of close friends and... Well, everybody. They are all my friends. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we are still connected on Facebook. So this, I believe, is grade 12. So in grade 12, you know, is the picture time. So we took pictures everywhere. <laughs> I believe there is some castle here. This picture was taken in front of the castle. Okay. Yeah. So, but as you can see, um, the ethnicity is not so diverse. Right. In Romania, it's mostly Caucasian people. So mm -hmm. that's why you don't see any other ethnicity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so coming out of high school, you went to university for accounting. Was that something that, that you were passionate about? Or was it just, this is going to be a profession I'm going to pursue? Or was it... Was it in the family? How did you pick accounting? Well, my mother picked for me. Okay. <laughs> but <laughs> it was a good choice. I'm very happy she guided me to take accounting. Mm -hmm. I st so everybody, so we all study accounting. In high school, in Romania, back then, I don't know how it's now, you can choose some specialties. So back then it was physics, biology, and economics. Mm. So my mother said, okay, go and choose economics. You're going to be a big boss. I said, I don't know. I don't really know what's going on there. I said, trust me. <laughs> and then I choose economics, and part of the curriculum was accounting and mm. finance and statistics. So I, I enjoy it. And then when I went to university, I continued studying accounting. Okay. Yeah. And when you came out of university with a degree, and here's your graduation picture that yeah. you sent, um, and that's your grandma and grandpa, I believe? No, gr grandma, uncle, me, sister, mother, and auntie. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. And yeah. was that a four-year degree? Yes, four-year degree. Okay. And what was the plan? Were you going to get a job as an accountant? Was there like an accounting firm or... Well, actually, I didn't had, I didn't had this kind of plan. So back then, so then I I need to talk a little bit about sure. accounting and my university. Right. So this the program that I did in the university was uh, accounting and information systems. So even back then, I was passionate about technology. And I really believe that computers can make our lives easier and the work more efficient. So even back then, I was thinking to develop an accounting software or something to help the profession. So developing Accountium, which is the software that we build right now, it's, it's a long passion and dream of mine hmm. that started there. <laughs> wow. And yeah. what year did you graduate? Let's see, 2006, I believe. Okay. Yeah, or seven, something like that. Yeah, yeah. so almost 20 years ago, yeah. you were you were conjuring up the notion of building an accounting software. Yes, yes. And did in the, your course, were you also coding and, and that side of things, or was it more an, analytics or strategy? A little bit of coding. I don't know if you remember Turbo Pascal mm -hmm. and MS-DOS. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the university developed a, an accounting software, their own 
it was MS DOS. Okay. <laughs> you know? And they give us some assignments, you know, to input some data into the software. And I said, what is this? You know, some other countries, America, they have Windows. And sure. We still, <laughs> we are stuck with MS DOS. <laughs> and that, that one inspired me even more to, to create this app. Hmm. I said, com this computer and this software slows everything down. It has to be a better way, another way. Hmm. Yeah. And did you pursue that at that point, or did you just sort of park that on the side and continue to think about it? Well, I didn't pursue that at that time. It's coming out from university, you know, you're, you don't know what you want to do. Right. <laughs> honestly. And I had a few jobs, uh, bookkeeping and uh, business administration. So I worked for a company that was importing agricultural machines from China. So I was doing everything there. <laughs> hmm. You know, sales, purchases, inventory control, marketing. And yeah, I didn't, I didn't think it's possible for me to build a software back then. Hmm. Yeah. And this is another photo from a typical <laughs> this is photo some from university. Yeah. After class in university. So mm -hmm. these are my colleagues. <laughs> so somewhere between 2006 and 2009, you started to set your sights beyond Romania. Yes. Uh, and your brother had moved to North America. Uh, and you... Well, tell me about that whole journey. Like, why did you... Why did you pick Canada? And did you think of any other country that you might want to go to? Well... As I mentioned before, Romania was uh, transitioning from communism and it was not transitioning fast enough or in the right direction. Still lots of corruption, lack of opportunity. You have to be the kid of some senator, you know, to get a good job or uh, to start a good business. And of course, I travel all over Europe. I went to Finland, I went to Sweden, Germany, most of the countries in Europe just to see how, how it's out there. But in the meantime, uh, my brother got married and then his wife, she was a teacher in Romania, uh, she got a contract to move to USA. So she went to South Carolina. And then my brother joined her there. They stayed there for about a year or two and then they visit Vancouver from South Carolina. They really like it and then they decided to come here. Mm -hmm. And while they were here, they keep sending me pictures and we keep talking. And they said, hey, you should really come here. This is a good country to be. Lots of opportunities. It's very developed. You're going to like it. Mm -hmm. And it gave me some idea about what I want to do. And then... And could you freely travel from Romania? Or was there any restrictions on, like you mentioned, going to various countries in Europe? Well, Romania is part of European Union now. And okay. I believe it was part of European Union back then. Right now you can just travel with your ID in any country in Europe. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I think, yeah, most of the countries were open borders back okay. then. So yeah, I traveled freely. Mm -hmm. But and you so, could yeah. not come to Canada without a visa or PR. Right. Yeah. And you had an uncle here as well, right? Yes. Yeah, so we had an uncle. He moved here in 1986, I believe. Yeah. So we had some base here. We didn't just come mm -hmm. like to, to a new land just right. like that. We had some base. And so on that process, did, when you came to Vancouver, was it on a tourism visa? Or was it like, were you just coming for a visit? And then how did you get here? So back then there was this program called Skilled Immigrants. So I applied for that. And I got my PR even before I came to Canada. Okay. Yeah. So when I arrived here, I was already a PR. And what does PR stand for? Permanent resident. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For those that don't know. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, it's, it seems like an incredible journey. You've, you put it in very simple facts. I just moved, but you moved across the world to a place that you really didn't know. Uh, you had some, uh, I guess, some family and and idea that 
but what was your plan? How did you think you were going to to make a living, to pay rent, all of that? Well, when you're young, you don't think like that, you know? You like adventure, new mm -hmm. things, let's just go <laughs> think later. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if it will be to start now, I will not move. <laughs> Got it. I barely go out from my city. I don't like to travel anymore that far, you know? Yeah. Your trip from... Uh, from Surrey from, to Chilliwack, it's a long trip for me now. <laughs> exactly. And, and it's probably felt like more of an adventure today than coming from Romania exactly. to Vancouver. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And so your um, accreditation in finance, economics, accounting, etc., you needed to do some upgrades. So I believe you went to BCIT in Kwantlen to do that? Yes. So there is this um, organization, part of BCIT, called ICES. So they uh, evaluate and upgrade your credentials from outside of Canada. But even there, there was some adventure and some challenge. So I just went to their office with my diploma and I said, no, 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 you cannot do like this. You cannot just give us your diploma. It has to come from your university. So what do you mean? You want me to send it back and then they will mail it to you? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but it's right here. You know? <laughs> well, that's the procedure. Hmm. I said, okay. So I mail it to my friend in Romania. He take it to university, university put it in envelope, stamp everything, give it back to my friend. My friend take it to the post office, send it to ICS. They receive it and they call me. It was not sent the proper way. Was it sent by your friend? <laughs> I said, of course. No, it needs to be sent by the university. Well, I said, they, we don't have that service in, in Romania. University, they do whatever they need to do. They stamp it and then they give it to my friend or my family said, well, we cannot accept it. So I had to talk to many people there, man, we need to do something about this because I send it back, it's going to come here the same way. <laughs> and then finally, I found some reasonable guy. <laughs> and he said, look, what I'm going to do, I'm going to call university. If they confirm, it's okay with me. Oh, I said, thank God. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the story with my diploma. Travel more than me. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> And so one of your first jobs, you were working for the Vancouver School Board in administration and... Um... Mm, no, this was not my first job. Okay. So my first, it was not a job. So when I come to Canada, I send more than 300 resumes and no job interview. And then I volunteer into an accounting office and... Fortunate me and unfortunate for somebody there. He got into a car accident and he had to be out for three months. And the manager said, you want to work? <laughs> I said, sure, I want to work. Mm. And that's how I started my journey in accounting in Canada. So I worked there for a year and a half. Then I moved to a food distributor company. So they were buying organic food all over the world and sell it here in Canada. I was doing cost accounting there. And then I moved to Vancouver School Board. Hmm. But I didn't do very little accounting here. It was just admin work, administrative assistant. Okay. So I think this was one of my best jobs in Canada. <laughs> so my title was the secretary, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I was the only male secretary <laughs> in the whole district. And they have these people uh, on call, it's called. Mm -hmm. So whenever a secretary gets sick or takes a day off, you have to substitute. So I was going one day at one school, two weeks at another school, a month at a, a school board. So all the time I was moving. So I did that for about five years, hmm. but I really enjoy it. Before working at a school board, I didn't want to have kids. <laughs> but somehow being there with the kids, you know, make me rethink. Hmm. And now I just love my kid. Wow. Yeah. And your father at some point uh, came to Canada. <laughs> and this looks like it's a Christmas time. Yes. So this is me, my father and my brother at my brother's house. So, yeah, my father, he, he was here maybe four or five times. 
he really liked it. But he, when he was younger, my age, no, when he was at the same age when I left Canada, he said, man, if I had a chance to live at that age, I would be in Canada too. Hmm. But back then, if you try to leave Romania, just like North Korea, you're going to suffer and your family suffer. Hmm. So he said, I asked him, move here, stay here with us more. But no, he said, it's too late for me to accommodate to a new country. So he's just coming and going now. He doesn't want to stay here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And about three years ago, <laughs> you welcomed your son. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So I think this is him after a few weeks. Yeah. What's his name? Paul. <laughs> <laughs> but his name is Paul Rusankin. Okay. So we combine the last names of her mm -hmm. mother and mine. So mm -hmm. his name is Rusan Kim. Rusan plus Kim. <laughs> nice. Yeah. And you live, you mentioned Surrey. Yes, we live in Surrey now. Okay. Uh, at the beginning, were you in downtown Vancouver or... Or where first, did you? First time I come to Surrey, then I live in Vancouver for a while, and then I moved back to Surrey. And what are you doing now? What um, you started an accounting practice, and who are your clients? Well, I started my accounting practice when I had my first job in the accounting office. Okay. But at a smaller scale. So back then I I learned. Um, the role of an accounting office in Canada. In Romania, it's not like that. Most of the companies, they have their own accountant in-house. But here, small companies, a medium size, uh, they hire an outside accounting office. So to me, it looked like a good opportunity to start my own my own practice. So uh, my brother, he's, he's doing roofing. He has a construction company. I'm doing his accounting since many years ago. And then most of his friends in the construction industry are my clients since back then. But I didn't... Back then, yeah, I was <laughs> in a different state of mind, you know, still exploring, accommodating to Canada. I didn't think to expand the business, my accounting business. That's why I had only a few clients and a job. Hmm. Right now, I'm only doing accounting and I'm developing the software. And it yeah. sounds like... As an accountant, are you're an office of one with some with some people that you work with? Is that right? I don't have an office. Everything is done remotely right now. Mm -hmm. And most of my clients, they ask me to go for lunch or dinner with them, or go to their office. So there isn't there is no need for me to have an office right now. Right. Yeah. And so, you, at some point, you're working with apps like QuickBooks and. Sage and Zero and FreshBooks, and you say to yourself, "Well, I see an opportunity." What was wrong with those softwares, in your mind? It's not that something was wrong with them. It was not. Uh, it was not sufficient for the way I like to work, and the features that they have. It was, for example, QuickBooks. QuickBooks is a very complex software. You need. You need a, a course just to understand how it works. Our software is very simple. If I spend 10 minutes with you and I explain how it works, you're going to be an expert. Hmm. And of course, the, the idea that I had in university, build an accounting software, it didn't go away. It was still in the back of my mind. So, but... I was still thinking about it. I said, there is, a, there is an opportunity here. There are 5 million businesses in Canada, 33 in USA. It's a big market. There are lots of softwares out there, but none of them is complete. None of them, it's, it has everything that an accountant needs. And I believe these apps are not made by accountants. I don't know. They are made by developers, mm. but not by accountants. <laughs> Yeah. And so what's the first step? How do you even go about saying, I'm going to solve this problem? Do you, do you sketch it out? Do you talk to a developer? How do you go about from this notion that I think I can do something better to I'm going to do my beta? 
Well, it happened during the 2000, during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. uh, so back then, uh, I started to get more and more customers for my accounting business. And m most of them, they need payroll services. And all the, all the apps there for payroll are kind of expensive. And I said, I can build our own payroll app. And then I called one of my good friends from Romania, who's a developer right now. And I said, man, can you, are you up to the challenge? Let's build this software together. And he said, yes. So first we built the payroll app for my business. And I want it. So right now, and even back then, my customers send me, hey, this, uh, this many hours for my employees process the payroll. So my idea was to automate, get the hours from the business manager straight to the app. So I had some idea to automate the payroll app. And then again, I, I never give up about, uh, I never give up my dream about building a uh, full accounting app. And I keep trying to get funding to put a team together. And somehow in 2001, I got accepted into this program by MyTex, MyTex Accelerate. So 2021, you think? Yes, sorry, yeah. 2021, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, so we partner with MyTax and University of Alberta, and we we could finally start to write the first code. But we we were lucky because our uh, payroll app was super good. We just had to integrate it. So, hmm. so your yeah. your friend in Romania, did you form a like a formal partnership, or were you just paying him for his time, or how did that arrangement work? Mm, it, it was more like a small side project for him. Okay. For him, he was his his master at at uh, computers. So for him, it was just something to do on the side as a hobby. Mm -hmm. For me, it mean a lot. But for him, it was very simple. He spent a few hours every day. So it's not really like a partnership. It's just hey, my friend, can you help me with this? <laughs> Say yeah, sure. So when you scale this and actually sell it for a billion dollars, <laughs> how's he going to feel? Well, will you have some sort of arrangement, do you think? Of course. Yeah. Of course. Okay. So I believe everybody who participates in this app mm -hmm. needs to be rewarded. And uh, I had a team from University of Alberta for the first session. So now we are in the second session, in the second year. In the first year, we had six developers and then four left, even those four that contributed at the beginning a little bit, even they're going to be rewarded. So yeah. with that program you're talking about, MyTax or yes. MyTech? MyTex. MyTex. Yeah. Um, are these students that are working on the project or graduate students or how does that work? They are uh, doing their masters. Okay. And they need to have some, uh, some experience in the field. Mm -hmm. So it's not inexperienced student, it's Mm -hmm. master students who have some experience but they are very good they are very good and passionate and so you're bringing the accounting expertise yeah. and to a certain degree information systems from your training how do you interact with the developers how do you speak their language well first I I, uh, I design a small sketch like where I want the, the buttons to be, the menus, the, the colors and everything. And I said, okay, I want you to transform this in code. And then I will tell you later on what needs to happen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's how we start with a few buttons here and there. And is this literally a sketch on paper or using... Well, some... I use Excel. Excel, yeah. okay. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. I would love to see what that looks like. <laughs> hmm. And so they go away and build this out. Are you, are you essentially building a web app is what you're doing? Yeah, so our app, it's uh, cloud-based. You mm -hmm. don't need to install or download anything. Mm -hmm. You just go online, create your account, and it's ready to use. 
and it's optimized for mobile, like super optimized. It it acts very well on on the mobile without having an actual app. Okay. From the marketplace. And where are you at now? You launched publicly in the spring, I believe. We launched in December last year. Okay. And primarily with your clients yes. and the payroll side yes. of it. So I ask all my clients, if you still want to be my clients, you have to use this app. <laughs> so everybody accept, accept, ex everybody accepted except one. <laughs> But I still keep him. I still keep him as my client because he's a good friend of mine now. <laughs> and I was very happy to to see the reaction of my clients and the feedback. The feedback was very good. They really like it. Some of them are coming from other apps, and they say, "Wow, Paul, what you did here is it's amazing. Nice and clean and straight to the point. Exactly what we need." And I think by starting with payroll, it's just one piece. Yeah. And and many people will use either QuickBooks Desktop or QuickBooks Online and use one of their plug-in apps, if I'm not mistaken. So you're just replacing that piece as your foot in the door? Well, yeah, you can work, you can work accounting that way. So there is the, the main accounting, like sales and purchases and inventory, and then there is payroll. So you can use one app for this, and then for payroll, there are thousands of apps. ADP, if you know Ceridian. Right. Yeah. yeah. And is that, that doesn't sound like the approach you took. You're saying, I'm doing your accounting and I'll stop doing it unless you use my full suite of products. Yes, yes. That's pretty bold. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess if, if you're a trusted accountant and, and, and it worked, then no problem. So, so most of my, my, my clients are construction companies. And they use different smaller apps or Excel or Word to send invoices and estimates. Mm, okay. And then they send me the invoice. So I introduce it in the computer. I said, we, we're not going to work like that anymore. You have this app. It's an amazing, super simple to use. Go and do your estimates and your invoices in our app. Mm. So I had to train them a little bit, but after they start to use the app, they said, well, we really like it. So they do their part in the app and me and my team of accountants, we do our part. So Help you're at GST and income tax and all that. So you've been out in the wild for almost a year. Yeah. And would you say you're on version one, like fully cooked uh, working software? Where are you at? So the app is... Uh, functional and has most of the features that I want from this app, except AI tools. So right now, you know, AI is the buzzword. Mm -hmm. So we want to integrate AI into accounting. So the app, you can use it, not a problem, but we are still working in the background to integrate some AI features. And so, when you say AI, AI features, what's your vision for that piece? Is it, what is the AI doing? Well, right now it's doing a few things, but I think it can do more. So, for example, uh, right now you have to go into the app to create an invoice. We create a feature, you send an email. Send an email to our app. Our app reads your email, prepares the invoice for you, sends one to your customer and one to you. And we are teaching the app uh, various scenarios and then the app is going to become more and more smart so for example you can uh, ask the app hey process this payroll for me process this remittance for me send me an income statement send me a balance sheet uh, create a project so we want everybody who hates a, sorry who hates accounting and I know lots of people do to love doing accounting you know they don't need to do they don't need to go into an app to create an invoice. Just send a message. Hey Accountium, do this for me. So that's our goal. To simplify accounting for everybody. Wow. How many yeah. may I ask how many businesses are now using or on top of it? I guess it's all of your customers at this point. So we have around 
hundred users in BC and about twenty seven in Alberta. Okay. Yeah. And how do you scale that? What's the next phase for this? Well, we have a few strategies, but so there is the easy and the sure way of growing, and there is the fast way, accelerated way, but we don't know if it's going to work or not. So the simple way is, and the sure way is for us to do a good job to serve our customers in the best way. So I give you an example. I have a construction company, big, big developer, and they have 32 subcontractors. So if the developer is happy, he's going to recommend me to 32 potential clients, which it happened. Of course, not, not all of them have come to, to us for accounting services, but most of them did. So that's one way. We're going to do very good with actual customers, and then they, they're going to recommend to somebody else. And it's, it's slow grow, maybe one or two customers extra per week, but it's something sure. And then there is the, the other way. Google ads, Facebook ads, uh, posts on LinkedIn and Twitter. Mm. So, but we are not very good at that. <laughs> We are IT people and finance guys, so we don't know marketing, we don't know sales. And this specialty in in construction, that seems like a, a bit of a superpower in that you can multiply and get referrals and so forth. Um, is it tuned specifically for that industry or can it work across different industries, just essentially any small business? or It can work to any any small and medium-sized business in Canada at this point. But we are doing some changes so it can work in USA too. So we need to change the, the taxation. Right now it only supports GST, PST, and HST. We're going to adapt so um, the users from USA can customize their tax, whatever the tax have there. So after that, we're going to start really to promote it in, in Google Ads and Facebook. Mm -hmm. And I know like when you select a bookkeeper or an accountant, they have a big sway in, in pushing you into a particular software app. Uh, have you thought about connecting to that level of network or is that harder to crack? Um, I don't think whoever is using QuickBooks for 10 or 15 years, I don't think they're going to change. Okay. I'm an Android user. I will never change to Apple. <laughs> so I think it's the same for them. But our, our goal is to help the new entrepreneurs, the new businesses. And uh, I did practicum for a few students from Vancouver Career, Career College. And one of them, we are still in touch. She moved to Edmonton and she opened her bookkeeping business right there. And she, uh, she's, she's using our app for all her customers right now. That's why we have some customers in Alberta. Hmm. So there are many ways to grow. We are not worried about that. I know it's, it, the competition is big, but also the market is big. And once this new feature comes to customize your tax, our app can be used international to any country. And just to have an idea how big the market is, so 38 million businesses in North America only, 1% of that is 380,000. We need five to 10,000, less than 0.05. And so it's a SaaS model, software yes. as a service, uh, yes. either a monthly or annual subscription, I would imagine. Yes. Uh, have you thought about where you're going to price it, like looking at the competition? and? Well, right now we offer all the features, payroll, sales, banking, uh, project management. All the features are at about $50 per month or 56, something like that. Mm -hmm. And then when the new AI feature come, it's gonna be around $100 if you want everything. So our pricing is way better than 
all the softwares out there. Mm -hmm. And so they talk about um, attrition or churn. Uh, as you're bringing on these two or three a week, how's your churn? Is it people are sticking with it? Yes, yes. So people are, are very happy with the app. The feedback is good. And some of our construction companies, clients, they ask us to build a few extra features like project management, and we did it for them, and they are more happy now. So, yeah. And so when you look at your day, how much of your day is spent on servicing your accounting clients versus energy into building out this new repeatable business? Well, most of my morning is taken by my kid. <laughs> <laughs> so he recently started daycare, and it takes me sometimes two hours just to get him ready you know, for daycare. And then I have my um, everyday meeting with my developers in Edmonton. So half of my day is gone just like that. Well, the good news is that your time should free up in about 15 to 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> well, now he's staying at daycare for five hours, so I still have some Great. time now. And then my uh, afternoon... After lunch, I start doing some accounting work for my existing clients. And then in the evening, I try to connect to new clients or potential clients. I go to networking events. I uh, connect with my actual clients and ask for referral. Yeah. Wow. And so you've built out, you're the CEO. And yes. some of these folks are... Are they full-time employees or still working on contract? It's contract. Yeah. Everybody's contract. Yeah. Everybody's doing remote work. And are you still relying on your friend in Romania to check the work, essentially? Or is he not involved anymore? He's involved. But he said, hey, if you guys finish more work and then I'm going to check. <laughs> so he wants uh, more work done. Mm -hmm. And at this time, I'm also reconnecting with an old friend of mine. He's, he's in Helsinki, Finland. He's a senior developer for Ericsson. And him and his wife, very good friends of mine, and the wife, she wrote a book about how to build an ERP. So she has the same dream as mine. Me was about an accounting app. She's about an ERP. So right now we are working to build an ERP. Okay. Yeah. So I'm collaborating with them. Hmm. Yeah. So what kind of advice would you have for aspiring? You're an expert in a particular field of finance, economics, accounting, and you have a dream. I want to build a software app. What, how do you make that leap? What's the first step? Well, it's, Follow your dreams or follow your skills. Me, I was very fortunate and lucky to my skills and my dreams, you know, to align. So if you have a dream to build something, an app or a business, I think it's very important to, to get the skills, to work more on your skills. And when you, you, you're going to have enough skills, then it is going to happen by itself, I believe. Hmm. And you've, to date, there's two different ways to go. Seek funding or bootstrap. And it sounds like you've essentially bootstrapped. You've raised your own, you've used your own money. Um, what are the pros and cons in your mind of, of the way you've gone? Well, the way I did it, it took very long time. At one point, I even wanted to to learn uh, coding, to do it myself. I said, man, I'm never going to get the money, but I need to make this happen. So I was contemplating, should I start PHP or some basic coding? But yeah, I think if, if, you're, if you're good at getting money from family or friends, do it that way. It's going to save you lots of time. And me, I wish I, I, I would have done this when I come to Canada. After I had my first accounting job, back then, I think it was not that expensive to build an app. But 
I didn't have the skills mm. and the knowledge and how things work in Canada. But back then, I think I could have got the money in a short time. So you're in a position now yeah. where you you have some choices you could make. For instance, you could continue on the same path, or you now have essentially a, a very viable product that's growing organically and adding new clients and functioning. Do you see pursuing outside investment at this point or just continuing on in the same <clears throat> vein? Well, the hard part is done. Mm -hmm. I don't see any reason why, why <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> why should ask for investment right now. I guess one reason would be to, to pour some fire on it, to promote, to, to build out the team and, and the features. But on the other hand, if it's growing, then, then why, right? Well, the app is already growing, and to me, it's already a success. We are happy. Our work, our work is so simple now and, and efficient, so it simplifies our life. It really helps our customers and everybody who use it, they like it. So I think it's already a success. Everything else that's coming after that is just the cherry on top, you know, many cherries on top. So we, we welcome that. But I don't see, uh, I don't see a, a reason for asking more money from somebody. We, we lack in marketing strategy and sales. But I think there are lots of professionals here in Vancouver who can help us. Right. And you yeah. can hire that essentially yeah, yeah. without giving away equity. And exactly. Exactly. So you guys are going to have more questions than I have, but let's hear it for Paul. Okay.